We'll now look at an advanced graphics library in R called ggplot. The gg in ggplot stands for grammar of graphics. And in ggplot, you'll see that we create charts by creating the basic empty chart and then adding on layers as and when we need them. Okay, it's a very easy way by which you can uh, incrementally create the charts that you want and you can add lots of uh, different kinds of things one by one, layer by layer. It's a very powerful package and I'm sure you'll enjoy learning about ggplot. Now, for this, uh, the slides and material for this I have taken from this particular website. Uh, it's created by a person called Hadley Wickham who is in fact the author of ggplot and uh, uh, th this is where I have drawn the material from for this particular lecture. Uh, you are welcome to go there and look at it and you will find it to be very interesting and illuminating. In fact, even for other topics in the course when we are talking about R, I will be relying extensively on this site from Hadley Wickham. Before we get into ggplot, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, in this uh, course, when we are covering R, uh, I'm going to be using uh, many different packages uh, that Hadley Wickham uses uh, in, in that site that I had mentioned and might be a good idea for us to get those installed uh, before we move any further. So first of all, you should install the package called Tidyverse, T-I-D-Y-V-E-R-S-E and uh, uh, you can install the package just by typing this command install.packages tidyverse. Uh, in fact, this command is in the code file for the session, so you just step through it and, and it will happen. And then you can load the package uh, by doing library tidyverse. No need to put quotes here. And once you do that, what will happen is that uh, all the required packages would get installed. Of course, for this particular session, uh, we are going to be using uh, almost only ggplot2 from this a set of pack tidyverse is actually a collection of packages that get installed. Uh, for this class, we are going to be using almost only ggplot2, but in just one of the commands that we use, we'll be using uh, another package called uh, dplyr, uh, which is also included with tidyverse. So if you do this, you'll be all set for the rest of the course in terms of our packages. Uh, of course, later on, I might suggest a few others, but uh, this will take us quite a good distance. Okay, so let's look at ggplot. Uh, this time we'll be using a data set of, which has data from fuel efficiency.csv. This consists of information about car fuel efficiency for uh, fairly recent cars. And uh, it, this data set provides a lot of opportunity and a lot of, uh, uh, what would you say, a lot of potential for exploratory data analysis. Okay, so first of all, we read the data into uh, data frame called MPG. Incidentally, uh, the code file for this session uh, I've already posted so you could uh, download it and then continue executing the code as you go along. Okay, so now we are first gen are gen generating our first ggplot graph. Okay, so although the library, the package is called ggplot2, the function for ggplot is ggplot. That's the name of the function, right? And typically, you will say ggplot, and within parentheses, you will indicate uh, the data set you the, the da data set that you're going to use for that uh, particular chart. Okay. Later on, you'll see that it's not necessary to state it right here, but this is common. Okay. So I'm saying ggplot data equals mpg plus geom point. Okay. In other words, what we are saying is, I I want to first create the empty plot which is what happens when you do this here, ggplot data equals mpg. And on top of that, I want to add a layer of points. Okay. And it's called geom point. Okay. And to get a layer of points, you use the function geom point. Okay. Now, when you say geom point, of course, you need to specify the x and y axis. And you're specifying that right here. You say mapping equals aesthetics. Right? So when you're plotting something, you first of all have to indicate what you're plotting, which is the function. Geom point is for you know generating, uh, plotting a, a layer of points. Then you'll see geom box for plotting a layer of box plots. Geom line for plotting lines. So all of that you specify by the function what you're plotting. But by aesthetics, 
you want to indicate more specifics about what you're plotting, to control more about what you're plotting. And of course, obviously, one of the things you want to control when you're plotting points is, well, what defines the points? What is on the x-axis? What is on the y-axis? So in this case, we are saying x is displacement. And of course, this is in the context of the data frame MPG that we've already read in. So x is displacement, y is highway, which is the highway miles per gallon uh, in this particular data set. Okay, so if you do this, you'll get this nice looking chart uh, with displacement on the x-axis, as we said, highway miles on the y-axis, as we said, and each uh, data, uh, each row indicated as a point, we got that because we said geom point. Okay, so that's a much better looking scatter plot than what we, uh, what we can get with base graphics in R. Okay, now some important points here. This is what the function call looked like. Uh, the function call looked like in the previous slide. The first part creates an empty plot, just the plotting area. Okay, so in fact, if you execute just ggplot data equals mpg, you'll see nothing, right? Because we have not indicated what to plot, how to plot it, nothing. Okay, and then we say plus, and uh, here we are adding a layer of points as we already discussed. Now, it's very important to make sure that the plus sign appears at the end of the first line. Otherwise, if you put the plus sign on the next line, then ggplot data equals mpg is a complete command. R will execute that and it'll stop. Okay, and then if you try to execute the next command, it'll be plus something, which is obviously a meaningless command. Okay, so that is why in ggplot, if you're, uh, it's a good idea to put the plus sign at the end of each line because your ggplot plots will typically have several lines of code. One plot will have many lines of code and it's a good idea to put the plus sign at the end of each line rather than at the beginning of the next line because if you put it on the beginning of the next line then the previous line would complete the command and R will simply execute that. Okay, you don't want that. Okay, uh, so that is why the plus has to come at the end of the first line not on the following line. This is very important. It's a common mistake. in and. Uh, Try the following. What happens if you just run ggplot data equals mpg? Okay, as I've said, because you've not specified anything, any layer of uh, data to plot, you'll get an empty plot. Okay, so how many rows and columns are there in the mpg data set? You can find that out by using end row and call, or even better, you can find it out by using the dim function. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead here and uh, uh, install the, uh, run the, G, load the ggplot library, read the data, right? Once I have read the data, to find out the uh, size, I can, I can do dim mpg, okay? Dim is a function that will tell you the number of rows and the number of columns. So if I execute this, I see that I get 234 rows, 11 columns. Okay, so instead of doing n row and n call separately, you can just do dim and that will get you the result. Okay, so 234, 11. Make a scatter plot of highway versus cylinder. Of course, in here I'm talking about make a scatter plot using ggplot. Okay, so uh, you know, you take a look at the command from the previous slide, uh, you'll be able to do it very easily. So just change the x and y. That's all we, we need to do, right? Earlier, we had different X and Y, but now highway versus cylinder, right? And I'm assuming we want, uh, you know, the cylinder on the X axis and highway on the Y axis. Let's say that's what it is. So you plot it and that's what you get, okay? This plot will look a little uh, strange. The plot points won't be highly scattered because the number of cylinders is, uh, you know, it's a numeric variable and it's discrete. Right, so you have three cylinders, four, five, six, and eight. So you'll have one set of points at three, another set of points at four, five, etc. The points are not going to be distributed. So you look at that particular chart when you draw it. Okay, what happens if you make a scatter plot of class versus drive? Okay, uh, that is class being uh, one of the columns in the data frame is called class. Right, so I'm going to do here view. MPG, 
or of course I can go here and just click on mpg and one of the variables is called class see here it says compact and then as you go down you see SUV midsize medium midsize etc that's what class is so if you make a scatter plot of class versus drive right and drive is a variable that contains information about as you can see here uh, four wheel drive front wheel drive rear wheel drive okay four F and R okay there are some rear wheel drives believe me as if you if you scroll down far enough you will see some rear wheel drive cars okay so those are the different values so if you make a scatter plot of class versus drive and you know you will see the chart and why is the plot not very useful okay so take a look at it then we'll uh, at some later point we'll we'll discuss this okay so what really happens is that many points are they completely overlap right because class is a, a categorical variable drive is a categorical variable so there's only a certain number of combinations so even though we have 500 234 rows of data in our data frame there are only some 20 or so distinct such combinations of this right so you will have very few points so the point is a number of points they just overlap and you don't get all the you know you don't uh, you get very few points plotted in this okay so it's not a very useful plot that's what's coming turning out to be okay now if you take a look at that earlier scatter plot of displacement versus highway miles you see that there's a bunch of cars on this right hand end which seem to have high displacement which means they are powerful big engines and for that we would expect the fuel efficiency to be low as per this trend but the fuel efficiency seems to be sort of higher than what you would expect okay so now we have uh, we looked at the scatter plot and we are intrigued let's say by this we want to explore further uh, as to what is going on here maybe these are hybrids is that why their uh, highway mileage is a little bit better maybe maybe not we don't know we need to explore right so what can we do to explore that one thing we could do is to see for we are right now seeing only two variables displacement and highway how about if we added one more variable to the plot right would that give us a little bit more information okay so we add one more variable to the plot well hold on we are dealing with a two-dimensional surface you have already plotted two variables how do we add one more variable well we could add one more variable by color right so what we are saying here is geom point we have the aesthetics we said x is displacement y is highway but for every point let's give it a different color depending upon its class right so class consists of things like you know two seater four seater etc etc what class of car it is compact uh, things like that well what if we put a different color for each class so that way we are adding one more variable onto our two dimensional plot okay so now we have that right so if you put color remember color is also part of the aesthetics right when you say color equals class what we are saying is uh, class is a categorical variable so we are saying for every different value of class give it a different color right so then automatically R, R does this for us every variable every plot a point now has a color and you see that uh, for and of course it automatically adds this legend for us right so it has colored two seater cars with one color compact with another color etc etc so now going back to the question for which we drew this plot you look at all of these these you know peculiar ones which are high displacement engines but giving better than expected mileage it turns out that all of them are two seater cars who drives a two seater car right usually the two seater cars that we have seen are uh, you know highly fuel efficient small cars that you see running on the road you would hardly expect those cars to have a high displacement right Think about the two two seater cars that you might have seen on the road. Uh, I think there's a car called Prime and, and some other cars. Those are not high displacement cars and they're not hybrids either. So what's going on? Right? So now what we might do is go into our data set 
and look at some two-seater cars here right so let's see here where are the two-seater cars anyway uh, if you went and did that you'll see that all of these are actually sports cars oh that makes a lot of sense they're sports cars and that's why they have uh, big engines but because they're sport cars they want to keep the weight down and so although they have big engines the bodies are comparatively much lighter and smaller okay so that is why their mileage is not as bad as you would expect right because these cars the regular cars with these high displacements are all trucks and so on so that's what is going on here okay it's just a small scenario of how data exploration uh, will help you to ask and answer some questions okay uh, so it's not that we can only add a dimension by adding color we can add a dimension by adding a shape instead of color right so now we are saying instead of uh, giving a different color to class cars belonging to different classes instead give them a different shape right now sometimes this may be useful because you might be showing your presenting your charts on a black and white surface so color may not make a lot of sense in that context so we can plot them with different shapes and that's what's going on here but then if you look at the legend you'll see that there's no shape for SUVs okay reason being that when you use shape R has only six distinct shapes so if your variable has more than six distinct values then shape is not very very helpful okay so SUVs have completely disappeared from this plot altogether okay so that's one small restriction with shape but of course there are many many situations where we have in fact six or fewer uh, different values and so shape will work just fine 